Hello, welcome. What a lovely day today, Tuesday. Hope you're all having a nice day. How's the weather where you are? Today we've actually got some beautiful sunshine and blue skies. It's just really nice driving down on the motorway without all that horrible wind and rain. So yeah, it makes the day feel even better than normal. So hopefully you're all having a nice time and you're ready for a little bit of uh, tuition on the beading front. And I'm kind of solo today, so if things go really wrong, you'll know why. But uh, I'm sure we'll have good fun together. So let me know you're there. Give us a little heads up, a little hands wave or a little heart. Um, and hopefully enjoy today's project. We've got a very nice, it's a simple idea. And once you get into it, I find it quite addictive as well. So you're going to enjoy having a go, hopefully. Uh, very simple, not too many beads to be worried about. But as you go along, you'll find your your mind will start wondering as to what other beads you could be including in this idea. So it's a really, really good one to use. And so just to go through the couple of little add mini things, we've still got a discount available on the last week's tutorial product um, bundles for you. Um, Matthew's excellent little earring demo on Friday. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. And that little elf was absolutely gorgeous. And the little candle and the nutcracker was brilliant as well. So there are discounts and bundles available still to be found on the website. Um, so go along and have a look um, anytime during the tutorial or after the tutorial, hopefully, and see what's still there. And we'll get going. So let's show you something other than a blank screen. So the one you will have seen on the, the pictures, the websites, as this lovely little one here and zoom in just a little and you can see we've got some beautiful glass pearls we've got these gorgeous little goldstone beads which I absolutely adore and the bicones as well which are kind of a two colour of bronzy gold and translucent and they just really sparkle and you can see the way they're all joined together is tiger tail macrame and you can see it's quite a simple idea but you can obviously play it along with the ideas on this and we'll go through the different colours as well so this is the Sahara I think really aptly named also rich desert colours beautifuls and there was a bracelet version of that one I've done as well so today we'll demo the bracelet version because it'll be a little bit easier to fit on the screen for you and um, this is another colorway with the lava kite beads the hematite and again some bicones and the lava kite as you move them around and they catch the light on the surface under there and that was the silver storm aptly name I think as well I say it's a beautiful bead absolutely lovely and if you can catch the light, let's see if we can bring that up a little bit. You see the light just glinting across under the surface of that gemstone. Absolutely lovely. Then we also have this one here. Now this is a seascape. And again, we've got the hematite beads on here in two sizes. And the bicones. And sort of a rich ocean kind of colour I reckon. So I quite enjoy jo choosing these colours as well. Hopefully you're all liking them so far. And we have the Rose Garden. Now this one with the gemstones. Well these are ruby and fizzoisite. I, I can't quite say that right. But you can see the rich ruby colours and then you've got the greens. And all in one bead fascinating and then we've got the little crystals and the little glass pearls in this one as well so it's a real pretty imagine that on a nice or oh, I don't know a garden party in the summer when we can all dream about warm days again not that we've had too many cold ones yet I'm doing quite well okay and this this one the, you'll notice I've changed pattern and I will go through this with you but it's very similar still and this one we're calling Louisiana Blues so there we go 
again we've got some blue agate bicones and like hematite beads again real rich colors real royal rich blue and the last colorway which aptly name again art deco so there we go and the sparkle off of these crystals are lovely and this one actually has got seed beads in just to mix it up a little bit and so I'll go through all these different cut patterns with you as well as we work. We we'll start with the basic and then work our way up a bit. So that's all our colours. Let's so say you'll find all the bundles on the website for you. And there is a special price set up. So you get a 10% discount off. Or if you have three bundles or more, you get a double discount. So it's all set up for you. So just add as you like to the basket. And then the discount will be implied for you. Okay, let's make a start. So this project uses this lovely tiger towel, which is just a, a metal thread, for want of a better word. I keep it in a bag, keep it under control, a little grip bag, so I can just poke the thread out of one corner, and as I need it, hold on to the reel through the bag and pull out what you need, and it saves the reel unspooling on you. So for the bracelet, I'm going to take about about a metre just under and this will be my working towel okay so this is a bit that's actually going to do all the work for us and then you have a lazy thread which is the one that runs through the centre of your bracelet and this is going to be about 30 centimetres okay now I've gone purposely longer than I need it because I like to have working space with this thread there's nothing more annoying than getting all nearly all the way through your bracelet or your necklace to find you haven't left yourself enough to finish nicely the less thread you've got to work with when you're at the end of a, near the end of your project the harder it gets to actually do the macrame knots involved okay so we're going to double the first piece of thread over we're going to take the crimp bead and pop that on Actually, retract that. We are going to take the toggle part of our beautiful toggle bead. It's a little rose petal on it. I think that's lovely. Okay, so that is going to go halfway along the thread. Okay, so it's just rough, don't need to be absolutely precise. Take your crimp bead, thread that on to both pieces, get hold of it, between thumb and finger, there you go, it's been tricky, okay, and just make sure it's actually gone through both of them, and take that to the end of your toggle, okay, so we're looking to have this little shape just up to here, Take your third, your, your second piece, I should say, which will be your third working piece. And all we're looking to do here is go up through the crimp bead. Okay. And this is the shortest piece, so this will be your your lazy strand in the middle. Come through your toggle. the toggle and then back down through that crimp okay and then just very slowly just work your your threads back up through the crimp bead don't pull them so tight that you end up not being able to move this this clasp that you're using give it a little bit of wiggle room and all we're going to do now is holding those threads Take some flat nose pliers and then just crimp. Okay. Right away. So we've got a nice crimp, nice and flat, and that holds all those pieces of tiger tail together. Not sure, just give it another little squidge. Okay. 
and that's what we're looking for there. Now you can just double check you've got your working pieces, you've got the spare little bit which we'll leave there for just the moment. Sorry, let's get back in camera. This little piece we'll leave just for the moment till we've got the first bead on and then we'll trim it away. So now I'm going to use a macrame board. so you can see it okay I put a piece of white paper on this because if you see the state of my macrame board it's got that many pencil markings on where I do measurements straight onto it I decided you didn't need to see any of that so here we go so pin your clasp down or actually thread it round the back I like to put it here so I can actually see the measurement nicely and then take your two longer strands and just pop them to a side. If you don't have a macrame board you can use a piece of foam, you could use a, a bit of cardboard box that's gone in the recycle bin. Um, just use a couple of pins to keep it together and it just helps you keep hold of everything. And you've got more control over the wire this way. All right, then we're going to build up our pattern. So if I should go back to showing you the original bracelet Okay, so I've got a different clasp on here, but don't worry about that. Same job. We got the bicone, two of the four mil gold stone, and the gla uh, glass pearl. And then uh, basically, with the pearl strand, if you go for this bundle, it's got a beautiful selection of different tones of the the yellows and golds and bronze. I'm going to say they're gorgeous. Now, if you want to keep the pattern of the strand. Just take them off one at a time if you like prefer to mix them up then just take them all off and just go lucky dip which one comes out okay so this bracelet i kept them in the order that was on the strand let's say whichever you might prefer to do a different pattern so okay so the first thing is to get this bicone on so let's put that to one side and we have our beautiful little bicone i mean look at look at those and they lovely. Let's try and get that on my hands. You can see. Um, there we go. I think they're gorgeous. Right. Okay. So using your middle thread, which is your shorter thread, okay this is your lazy strand it's sitting there not doing much other than holding your beads on pop your bicone on pop that original little off cut there over your bicone and now's a good time to get your snips in so you just want to snip that extra little thread just so it's flush with the end of the bicone because it keeps it tucked in from where it's gone round the loop okay the cut's underneath so we don't see it and it won't be enough for it to pull back out again. Your working thread. So if you make use of your macrame board, just pop it round the bottom and maybe back up and back round and that'll stop it moving about for you. Okay, back down here. So your macrame knot itself. Okay, very simple. Make sure your little bicones tucked nicely there and the way I always work the same way around with this so I would go the thread left hand over the top of the thread over the lazy towards the right the right thread is going to go under the lazy strand and come up between the lazy strand and inside that first hoop that you created okay and then just slowly pull them apart now if you pull your wire here and you put a lot of pressure on it you end up with kinks in this wire which isn't a major problem but it does potentially affect when you're doing some other beads a bit further down if you use the ends of your thread keep your fingers near the ends and pull away from yourself you knock everything off the table including your cup of tea 
but you won't damage your thread and it is quite forgiving but it's nice to keep it straight that's the first part of the macrame knot okay so that's basically a leftover right knot so now we've got to finish off they always come in pairs for this particular knot we take the right hand thread we lay it over the top of our lazy strand we take the left hand thread and make sure it's coming over the top of that one we go under the lazy strand and bring it up through that loop okay so say left over right and if it comes undone go back to the start right over the lazy left underneath up through the loop and grab hold and just give them a nice little pull now before you pull it too tight just ensure you've still got a nice little knot on that first piece and then pop pull your strands again away and you finish that knot so that's one complete macrame knot there so hopefully that makes sense and let's just have a better look at that for you sorry that's a bit too much of a zoom okay but hopefully you can see you've got the left over right and the right over left and it gives you this lovely neat finish and that's a complete macrame knight. You can get twists and turns with, with the knots. If you were to do just left-handed knots, it's just another way of knotting your thread. It looks nice. Just remember to do it all the way along your design. Um, but what essentially happens if you keep doing left-hand knots or right-hand knots, you end up with a twist, which you'd say is it's pretty. Um, and certainly if you're using different colour threads it, it does add to a design as well just remember which way you're knotting so that's our first knot so that's the basics on this part with the coming back to the original design just so you can see how we're going we've done our first bicone we're going to add our two gold stones now okay now these ones are on your working strands so we're going to pick up one working strand on the left Get our little gold stone, thread it on, pick up another gold stone and the right hand thread and pop that one on. Okay, so now they're sitting just nicely there and we're going to do our next macrame knot. So we'll go through it slow again just, just in case you're still trying to work it out. So left thread over the working strand, take the right one, go under the working strand and up through the hoop loop whichever way you like to see okay and then as we just work make sure our little gold stones are sitting near the top of the bico and then pull gently okay secondary knot right over left take the left thread under the working strand and up through your loop and then again just make sure everything's sat where it should be sitting and give it a nice little smooth pull okay so now we've got our bicone on the thread we've got our two little gold stones on the thread and they're just sitting on different parts of the thread to give you some different detail to your design okay so what we can do now we're happy with the pattern we're going to be using I can actually thread on the beads I need on the main thread the lazy strand as we're calling it so I've got my bicone the next one that's going to be on the lazy strand is a pearl so we pick up a glass pearl and if you've already worked out your pattern this is a good time just to pop all your beads beads on Let's get that back in. so I'm going to pick up the bicone pop that on another pearl now this is the pattern I'm using because these are the beads that are on the working, uh, sorry, the lazy strand. I don't need to worry about the gold stone ones at this point. We slot those in later. And for a seven inch bracelet with this design, I worked out we needed six pearls. And then I've got the bicones on each end because I thought the bicones bring it into a nice point which gives you a nice narrow finish. Whereas if you use the pearls, it has a slightly wider finish, which is not 
not a problem that's again that's a design choice for you and you have time playing with it and enjoy that time all part of the designing and then here we go so I'm just keeping my little glass pearls in the order they come off the strand add in the bicone between them there we go so this is the last pearl and one last bicone so these are already lined up now so again we'll just go to the end of the board and tie off the thread round the bottom just go a couple of times just to keep it firm if you've got enough thread you can obviously go off to the side as well okay So once you've got the hang of sorting out these knots, you can obviously bead, bead to your heart's content a little bit faster. Um, so we'll just add the pearl up, push the pearl up to the knot. We'll do left over right. Come down with the thread and do a right under the word lazy, up through the loop. Take both your sides and just gently pull okay now you want the the thread to come nicely around the pearl if you over pull the thread will try and find its shortest route and sometimes if you're using um, odd shaped beads for example you won't get a nice curve you'll get a one that pulls in slightly and it just makes the bead look like it's being a bit strangled so be nice to your beads other side of the knot right over left left underneath and back up through the right and pull gently okay. again another design idea going forward if you wanted you can have quite a nice large halo effect effectively you could add seed beads to this halo as well just as a little extra detail so you can see there's endless endless ideas with this so just while I'm Threading up, we got our pearl and we got to remember to add on our little gold stones. And as I say, these are on the working threads, so we can add one to the left and one to the right. There we go, let that slide down. Let's have a look and see what comments are going on while I'm just popping them on. So we've got Heather and good morning. We've got Liz, hello Joe, looking forward to the project. Thank you very much, Liz. Marlena, good morning. Purple Snowdrop, good night. Afternoon all. Kay. Tap, hello everyone. Purple snowdrop. Everything is a little blurry today. Oh no, I'm sorry, purple snowdrop. That will be my fault. Hopefully, it's got a bit better. Uh, hello from Houston, Texas, Cracky. Judy, thank you very much. And we've got uh, some other comments coming through as well. We've got Pam on Facebook. Hi everyone. Irina, hi. Janet, hi everyone. Oh, it's good to hear from everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to pop a comment in. Uh, Stephanie, hello as well. Thank you. Um, Aziz, hi from... Oh, I'm not... Algeria. Algeria. Sorry if I've said that wrong. Wow. Thank you, everyone. It's so nice that you all spend time just to pop in a comment in. It makes me feel very uh, welcome. Okay, so back to our little gold stones. We snug those there. So it's left over right under the lazy strand right to the left and just snuggle them up and you can see you just need to give that little gold stone a nudge on the left because you want him to sit there and we get our knot together second knot right over left left under right and up through the loop okay and just snuggle them together move your next bead up which is the bicone and again, left, right, right underneath, and up through the left. Okay, I know if my mum was doing this, she'd be having all sorts of troubles because her lefts and rights are always getting mixed up. It's quite entertaining when she's uh, directing in traffic. Finish the knot, right to left, left under right, and if it does move, just restart. And this is where we're saying about not having these strands too short because it does make your life harder to keep hold of them in place. So there we go, second knot. Give it a little snudge up and then bring your knot together. 
Again, remember to add your goldstone. Or you just create a new pattern because I've done a few of these and I keep forgetting to add the goldstone. And you come up with new pattern ideas. There we go. Just thread that one on. Let them sit by the bicone. Do our next knot. Left to right. Right up through the left. And snudge there. You can see what's happened here. The threads just wanted to come zoom in a little bit for you. As I've poured, the threads just sat under the bead and forced forced the bead down. So just pull your thread out the way, nudge that little gold stone up where you should be living. If you need to loosen it off, just push the wires together. And there we go. Make them sit where you want it to sit. And then we just bring those together again. Okay, second part of the knot, which keeps everything in. There we go. And then there's the second part of the knot, and just snug that up together. Okay, bring your next pearl in, left over right right under and back up through the look here we go and see don't bring it too hard because you can see that will pull so you want a nice tension when you're doing this not too firm just firm enough to tell the wire where you want it to go and again if it loosens off while you're doing that second or not just give it a little pull and then bring your second knot in So I think what I'll do, just to show you, I'll keep going with the bracelet. It's nice and easy as you can tell. And then I'll talk you through some of the other ideas and designs. Or I can show you actually on this thread as well. I think that might be a better idea. Okay, so hopefully you've all got the hang of what, what we're doing at this point. So if I just bring these two gold stones in and then I'll change the design a little bit. Okay, so bring them in, do your first macrame knot, bring them together, right over left, left under right, through the loop. Okay. Right, so if you were going to change the design, so you had about, this is probably about f roughly three inches of here for beadwork wise, and you wanted something a bit different in the middle. And if I show you an example what I mean by that, um, let's move that just for a moment. So this one here, and you can see we've started off exactly the same way. We've got the bicone, we've got the two small beads, we've got an 8 mil bead, two small boiled beads and the bicone again. But what we've done here is we've added the, the bead, the 8 mil, okay. and on the working strands, instead of just the one each side for the 4 mil, I've added 4, and then I've just placed it round to make sure it's sat comfortably comfortably around that eight mil bead there okay you could obviously add five each side which would just make the halo a little wider um, nice idea we could have added bicones into here as well but then we brought the beads round and done another macrame knot into here which kept them all together so you've got this lovely little beaded halo then we've gone back to the bicone another little section here with little four mils either side and the eight mil we brought in the little hematite beads again here the four mils and then we've changed it again on the central strand I had a, the bicone the eight mil round and a bicone but then to bring them together I've just changed the order and the different types of beads here so we added the four mil the bicone two four mils, another bicone and another four mil and then we've kept them together with the 
the macrame knot here. So it's just repeating patterns. Just have a play and see how the beads fit if you wish to change the design. Um, if they sit comfortably, then carry on and then pop that one down here, just so you can see the whole, whole bracelet. Okay, so you can see that nice big halo in the centre, and it's just working back to make sure you know what length of bracelet you want, and then working along to so you get your section in the middle, which is when I draw on my macrame boards, I'll have a straight line which is seven inches long in most cases, and then I've got a central mark so I know where I want my centre to be. If you can't get it quite perfect, you can change the size of some of the beads that you've got running up the middle strand. You could add an extra jump ring or two if you need to, to adjust it differently. Okay, so that's one way of playing with the pattern. This bracelet here, and again, similarly, we've just this, this is the Art Deco colorway, which is gorgeous. Let's just zoom in there for you. Okay, a sparkle for these beads. Here we go. So, on our central strand, we've got these lovely crystal six by four rondelles, I think these ones, and we've got these gorgeous little facet four mils and then a couple of the rondelles again that's on the central strand and then on the outside and it was a case of just playing with the beads so if you've got the, the, the seed beads the faceted beads in a nice pattern that's pleasing to the eye and then just made the adjustments as I went along that's a slightly smaller version so I've only got the one black facet in the middle rather than the two that's the repeated pattern again and then just finishing off with a smaller bit the seed beads and one gold facet so this is just different ways of playing with your patterns now okay and the other colorways we've kept pretty much the same sort of thing so if we just come back to our one here I'll do a couple more beads and then I'll show you how to finish off uh, tiger tail with the clasp so again move your bead up and then we're going to go left to right up through the loop bring it together right across left up underneath and up through the loop and again if that happens just restart left to right right to left and up through there and then bring your little knot together okay so if there's any any questions anyone anywhere please say and here we go remember to put a little gold stone beads on pop that on there on the right hand side another one on the left hand side and then we're going to do our next macrame knot left over right up through the hole make sure that bead behaves itself now I always seem to get this with the left hand bead so I suspect it's my tension is slightly stronger one side than the other because I, I'm sure the beads don't know if they're left or right so next loop to finish off There we go, just bring those together. We'll do another pearl. So we move that up the strand, left to right through the loop. And so once once you've got the hang of it, it's quite repetitive. It's the, the fun part that comes playing with the beads you're using. Left to right. Let's that again. So I think you'll probably understand now when I say about having longer threads to work with than you necessarily need when you work out the length of your bracelet because once they're short they move out of the way of where you want them to be so much quicker remember to add our gold stone to repeat the pattern and then we're going to add on the left hand side as well and quick scan through your comments it does look like some of you have been Christmas shopping I think that's misreading that 
I've done a little bit this week as well. I'm just quite impressed with myself. Bring those back up. Second part of the knot. So some of you will be having a go at this tonight and you'll be doing it in your sleep. Left over right, right over left. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to make this the last, it'll be a short bracelet, but we'll make this the last one so I can show you which where we go now at the end. So we just unthread this. I'll take off my beads that I'd lined up ready to use. Just leave the bicone on there. Just take those ones off, pop them somewhere safe. Put my thread back down through my, my macrame board here. To one side. Just keeps that nice and taut. Okay. So we've got our bicone. Now in order to keep the pattern the same, okay, I've not got a knot at this end of this bicone between the crimp and the bead. So I'm not going to be putting a knot at this end. And it's easy to do when you're not thinking about it. So these are going to come in together like here and be crimped and it just finishes off that shape nicely to match the other side. It's, it's nice to make you thought about the beginning and the end of something and they, it's nice if they look the same. So just remove the working part of the thread. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because I'll just show you the different threads. So you've got your middle thread your lazy strand and you've got your two working threads and at this point because the working threads have been doing all the work they were actually you know a fair distance shorter than the lazy strand okay which is the one in my thumb and finger at the bottom here it's a good to know which one is your lazy strand as well so we'll keep it long for the moment okay so, got some more people watch Nancy from Pennsylvania. Wow, Becky. Carol says brilliant tip. Hopefully, we'll give you lots of brilliant tips. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie says hello. Irina said, how about doing it with wire? 0. 0.5 maybe. Yep, I've done some macrame, macrame with, uh, I think 0. 0.6 was probably the the thickest wire I've done it with. Um, it works really nicely. It obviously gives you quite a much more structure to your bracelet so you can keep a curve to it nicely. Um, but yeah, definitely have a go with that. And just work with it slowly because it will want to kink. And once you've got the kink in the wire, it, it's, it's obviously there. You can't really hide it once it's happened. Um, even with a bit of straightening, it will still show. But it does come up really, really nice. I should have brought some samples I could have shown you. Or maybe that's a project for another day. Maybe. Okay. So we are now, I say, repeating what we did at the first part. Okay. So we're going to add our crimp and our toggle. So we're going to grab a crimp bead. We're going to pop on the, the long strand first. There we go. So pop that one on. Okay, and then as we come down, we can add our working strands. So there's one there. Okay, so we've got two threads there now. Bring it down a little bit just so it doesn't jump off. Grab your other working strand, pop that in through the crimp as well. Okay, and then you're going to bring all those threads, pull them all up through, just holding the crimp in my thumb and finger here, and then just slowly working all those threads up. Okay. Give yourself a little bit of working space at this point. Okay. We 
remember which one's your your lazy strand which is this one that runs all the way through your design that's your longest thread you've got okay so this goes quite a way you can cut it down a little bit at this point just to make it more manageable if you wish but always try to keep the, the middle strand longest just so you know which one it is okay and then we're going to grab the other end of our toggle and we just want to grab a jump ring as well Bear with me a second guys, I've misplaced my jump rings. Just because you need your toggle bar to have a little bit of movement between the beads and getting it through the, the round part of your toggle. Um, it just needs a little bit of movement. Here we go, thank you. So I've got a little jump ring. Just give it a little, little squidge, make sure the two pieces are together. Okay, so we've got our little jump ring here. I'm going to run all three threads through that jump ring. So, okay, so she's just sat on there now. I'll bring it down. So I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and finger here. Rest the crimp on this finger and we're going to slowly work our way through the rest of the tiger tail. So take the longest one, which is again what we're saying about your working thread. I'm just going to snip the end off so I haven't got this. You see I've got a bit of a bend on this piece. I want a nice straight bit, just make life easier. So snip that off. I've still got plenty of thread to work with. Bring that, that's coming through your jump ring, which is just under my thumbnail here, just keeping hold of it. We're going to go back through this crimp bead here, and then we're going to pass the working strand through the bicone. Okay. So that's just gone through the crimp bead there. And I'm, I'm going to pass it through the bicone. You can see that there just popping out this side of the bicone. So you can just give that a very gentle pull. Okay. Now we won't cut it off for a minute. We'll just make sure we can get everything else where we want it before we start snipping off bits of wire. Because there's no going back once you've done that. Take one of the working strands. And again, that's coming through the jump ring. We're going to pass that through the crimp. And you can see that's just come out through the crimp. Now I don't want this one going up the bicone. You can just go to one side and then grab hold of the end and give it a little pull. If it's getting a bit tight at this end, you can grab the your pliers and just give it a little pull. Again, don't go too tight at this point in time. And then your last working strand. Again, that's coming through the jump ring still pass it through the crimp and I have quite happily got six threads through most of these crimps occasionally you get one that's a little bit smaller but generally you can get all of in just wiggle them so all the all the threads are sort of a bit more in line and will make space for them if you find you've got one that you just can't do it you can snip thread the right hand side of your crimp so that it's passed through once and so when you squish your crimp it's obviously holding that in place for you so let's just give it another little squidge into the crimp hopefully you can see this and see some crimps are a little bit smaller than others but all the other demo pieces I've done have gone through quite nicely which is usually the way you can do these things live on telly and they just get out there to annoy you okay 
So like I said, don't worry too much if you can't. That will crimp because we've got it, got it coming out this way. Okay, we've got enough to be coming around our jump ring. It's going to be plenty secure. Give the other two a little pull. So you want those loops here coming around the jump ring. Okay, to be about the same kind of size. And just work one and then work the other until you get them to be about the same same position. Okay. So then we can give our little crimp a squidge. I'll just turn it over and give it a squidge the other way as well to make sure both sides are equally flattened. Right, so your working towel which is coming through your bicone. If you just get your plier, your cutters in there, sorry, and give that a trim. So that end is hiding within your bicone there. This one is one of the working strands, which is the one we successfully got through the crimp. Just pull it towards the crimp and get your flush cutters in there and give it a trim. And this one that we didn't manage to get back through, if we just look to where it comes out of the crimp, See, it doesn't need to go through the jump ring at this point, so I'll just pull that back through. And then I want to get as close to the crimp as possible to cut. Okay, so let's just get a bit closer for you. Can, hopefully you can see what's going on. So this is the thread. It's come up through the crimp this way, but I couldn't get it to come back through in the opposite direction. But it's held in place with that crimp being squidged. And just get the cutters in there and you don't want any sharp edges when you run your finger over the crimp okay so our finish is the same let's take it off the other end so there's our start okay and our finish obviously a very short bracelet for a little little girl maybe my goddaughter could wear this one but she's only five okay so that's our start and finish and then obviously with the jump ring the other end of our toggle class we'll just pop those two together so let's do that now so hopefully everyone got something out of that you learnt an idea have a go at the macrame and say it's quite addictive when you when you start doing this i'm going to open up our jump ring north to south pop your toggle clasp on Again, get your pliers in and give it a little wiggle just back in place and you can see you get a nice close on that jump ring. Okay. And there we go. So just show <laughs> as you can see it is quite a dainty little bracelet. I mean there's about four and a half inches, maybe five. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that um, if you've got any questions pop them on um, what should we talk about now should we go back and look at the bundles because I love all the colour ways we come up with this one so pop on the website and you can have a look at the colours so the one we've been working on today that's the Sahara um, website is the beadspider.co.uk um, hopefully you look at all the goodies on there because there's so much shopping you can do just make your own bundles as well enjoy the colours and say you can play with this design to your heart's content so add some different shapes in there get some different textures going but the bundles will come up with ideas for you in different colours and hopefully they'll inspire you to have a play and mix the bundles together as well that's always good fun um, so the bundle today was say the Sahara which was a beautiful goldens and bronzes and then we had the Art Deco which was the blacks and the golds and say so the prices have all been set up for you so you get a discount on the bundles if you buy three or more you get double discount so it's all good fun so shop to your heart's content I don't know what your favorite colorway would be I found the Louisiana blues is absolutely stunning 
and the sort of iridescence that comes off of some of those beads it's just sparkling I think there's so many blues and blacks in the shops at the moment for you if you're getting your Christmas uh, party wear out on the go there's certainly a lot of blues out there and blacks uh, so this one would work really nice with some of the black and silver outfits out there so you've got your silver storm and this was the one with the lava kite and then we had the seascape which again was those gorgeous oceanic colors of rich blues and greens absolutely lovely and don't forget you do get those gorgeous clasps as well the toggle clasp with the roses in your your bundles and the last color variant was the rose garden that's gorgeous ruby and zoosite glass pearls and the absolutely gorgeous sparkly crystals so imagine playing with the different uh, design ideas with all those sparkly beads and and if you've already got seed beads that's another thing to think about adding to maybe go around the outside of some of the bigger beads just to add another detail if you've got little um, maybe some of them really lovely micro crystals as well if you want to really bling it up uh, definitely a good idea to get some of those involved as well so i hope you've loved the tutorial and you've got some ideas buzzing in your head now and you go away and have a play and the tiger tail is not so scary and um, just keep those threads a little longer than maybe you think you need to work with just so they don't fight back because if they get too short it's really hard to get those knots to stay where you want them before you pull them into place so there we go that's all good anything else I should be telling you I think you've still got discounts available on last week's uh, bundles that we done for the tutorial and that was the twisted bracelet in different colorways we've got lots of different toggles and things on the website you've got um, if you pop everything in the website into your basket that you're looking at with the bundles or the discount will come up <coughs> for you it's all easy easy shopping just change your different uh, if you say you have had free bundles you'll get an extra discount that's working out around £4.24 that's fabulous 20% off real good so yeah enjoy your shopping and don't forget there's still the uh, earrings that uh, Matt was making last Friday I don't know if you joined in with that tutorial I was certainly watching and having fun that little elf is gorgeous and your head's sort of buzzing with ideas as to what different colour stockings you might give him or her I might have gone for some pink and white stockings just to make it a bit more fun and there was the candles the nutcracker the little angel but yeah brilliant fun and if you're looking for little Christmas presents for family members that could be a way could be the way to go so there we go I think I'm about done hopefully I've got all the information I meant to say and uh, you've enjoyed your afternoon so be lovely to see if you come up with some different ideas on the macrame front pop your pictures on and I'll try and keep a look out for them and see what you've been up to be nice to see okay guys I'll leave it there and uh, well going on next Tuesday I'll be back on Tuesday another exciting little project for you um, still working on it but it's it's coming up very quite sparkly and yeah that's going to be a good one and then Matthew will be on a Friday uh, another little project so all good all good lots of things for you to learn so yes we'll see you again soon okay thank you bye <laughs>